everybody, what is going on? It's your boy today 3 Welcome back to another episode of Team Fight Tactics Concepts. Today, it's actually a special day. It's the celebration of 10 years of League of Legends is starting today. And I figured what better way to celebrate 10 years than to actually go over some concepts about this sort of thing. Now, before we actually jump into the video, we've not just got champions, we will be having some items, like, items that you would have thought would make sense to combine certain things and obviously be useful in TFT. Now, in the League of Legends 10 years livestream they did yesterday, they discussed teamfight tactics changes and the new set they're releasing and in that new set it is including some new champions that I've actually discussed in this series like looks there's also discussion about new traits like poison which I'm actually surprised about and there's also some returning champions but with new abilities like I believe Zed and yeah it should be an interesting change up here and I honestly can't wait. But enough about these sort of things that are already planned. Because, like, this episode was going to contain Annie. I'll already give you the heads up. But she's already been announced for set 2. And I'm honestly thinking they're going to go for a similar route to what we've gone with this sort of thing. But anyway, as you can see, there's a little hint there from our little Legends offer. And yeah, we'll jump straight into things. Now, starting off, we're going to have our good friend, Mr. Maokai. Maokai is going to be a four-cost brawler and wild champion, who, as a whole, is very bulky. He's a bruiser in normal League Legends, so he fits both of these categories very well, as he's also a tree. Which is very wild, because it's lit wildlife. So obviously he fits that class, and Brawler just suits him. And his ability is not going to be his sapling. Oh boy, no. I didn't think his sapling would be too strong if we wanted him in this game. And as such, I went for his ultimate, in which obviously he casts it. It, uh roots enemies and obviously it only hits the front target and anything that's behind that target obviously does not get hit as you can see here that clip here and it fight it gets bigger the higher level he is so more branches get fired and yeah that is honestly going to be Maokai as a whole for TFT Moving on, from what I remember this to be, it's going to be Zyra. Now, Zyra will be a 3-cost wild elementalist, obviously fitting a sort of similar style to how a Lissandra fits into elementalist. She's a wild user whom Casp makes plants appear as her mana bar goes up. In a similar way to Gangplank Barrels. And from this, when she casts a rule, she'll either cast her Q or her E. And it obviously will create different types of plants. As you can see here, she's got her two different ones. Her Whip one and her uh, long-ranged shooty one. And yeah, this also... Fits her very nicely to how she is in normal league. It wouldn't get too... I, I mean, it could get a bit over-pressurized if she creates a lot of plants like you see in this episode. So clip here. Like, that's too... I mean... Maybe if you level her up, she gains more plants on the field. But I think starting with, like, two, and then working her way up to about five at level three, would honestly suit her 
a lot more. Now, from this, we can go into the next champion, which is going to be Ivan. Yeah, you can see where this is going. Ivan's going to be a five-cost wild guardian. Now, up until this point, I didn't actually realize every champion so far has been wild, but that will change in a few seconds. But Ivan's ultimate will be Daisy. Now, Daisy is the same as the Elementalist Golem, if you can't tell. But the only diff major difference is she knocks up targets. As you can see here, after three stacks, she knocks them up. This Golem will be like the original Golem from TFT, which is absolutely devastating in the original patches because it was very tanky, it did a lot of damage, and honestly made Elementalists a bit more of a threat than what they are right now, because obviously they have no real like frontliner. And um, the Golem in Elementalists is, it's poor to be honest. So giving Ivan the Golem and can honestly be useful, it's huge. Plus, I was contemplating adding the uh, his E, the shield, to his uh, ultimate, but it's a bit too powerful, I'd feel, if it was. But he'll keep the golem up during the entire fight. He sums it. And yeah, that should be an interesting character, to say the least. Moving on, we're going to have Orn. The Orn Horn is out. Orn will be a 5 cost champion with Forger as one of his abilities and Trait as his other. I mean, Brawler as his other trait. He obviously fits the Brawler stat. And Forger, if you don't know what Brom's in-game passive is, he upgrades items. And what this trait will do is it will upgrade a random item or a random few items on the team which obviously means they'll have to create a new icon for them but obviously with the addition of Thief's Glove item changing ha can happen between rounds and during rounds in theory so obviously being able to upgrade the item would be a huge thing and giving them like extra ability power bonuses, extra damage from burn like in a Sunfire KP effects. You know what it is, but that's not all. He he will have his own ability and it's gonna be his flame breath. Now the reason I went with this over the Call of Forge God is because it, we need an ability for a five cost champion to avoid CC. So what this will do is it will burn every target in the set around it. He'll also, whenever he hits him, knock him back. And he obviously dodges the CC effects. So oh, any ability, really, that's thrown at him will be avoided while he's blown the flame. Kind of like how Fiora's Repost works. But honestly, I feel it'll be a bit better because he's applying more damage and a burn that will stick over time and be honestly a very dangerous threat in this game mode. And finally for champions, we're going to talk about Heimerdinger. Now Heimerdinger is also a 3 cost champion who fits the Yordle and Hextech trait lines and his main ability will be the summoning of his mega turret. Now this turret will, after 3 hits on a selected target that Heim is auto attacking, will fire a mega blaster shot. And this turret will be honestly very bulky. It will last as long as Heimerdinger is alive, all the rounds alive. And he can honestly use this as a mega amount of damage as it will be able to probably target the entire map. So yeah, this will be a very large threat to anyone that comes against it. But the good thing is, 
the way it'll work is obviously it'll stack damage over time. It'll do minimalistic damage to start with, but if you let it ramp up, it'll obviously be a major threat. Now, with all the champions out of the way, let's discuss items. Now, items as a whole in TFT are kind of lacking. And I feel we need to obviously change it over for set 2. And set 2 should include items such as a Vampiric Scepter, Stopwatch, Gargoyle Stoneplate, Sunfire Cape, More of Malmortius, Blade of the Rune King, Lich Bane, and Sheen. Now, some of these you can tell obviously build into each other, and some of these are just like base items, and I haven't fully considered the entire tree of what they build into. Now, starting with Vampire Acceptor, it in effect will be the base lifesteal item. Honestly, they need to have something like this in the game mode. Instead of having to build either a Gunblade or a Bloodthirster to get health back on your champion, you should have a base item that does this already. It will be a allow you to change up the recipe to Bloodthirster, as having it be a Negatron Cloak and a BF Sword would much rather fit the likes of a Maw of Malmortius than a a bloodthirster hence why i put a different idea for what it could be built, built into on this slide stopwatch i was contemplating a zonia's but obviously a stopwatch would be huge and it would be either consumable or it's a building up piece to the likes of the gargoyle stone plate now you could if it's a buildable item up to and something could make a Zonia's Hourglass as an item as a concept but by the way it's actually put in it would be nice if there was a sort of an effect that was useful as just a consumable to be honest because it would be quite overpowered if it was just a hey I have a stopwatch every round this champion kind of so it's live, and it would be a little redundant if the fact that GA is going to be in the game. And that also allows you to change up the build path for GA as well, to a stopwatch instead of a BF sword and chain vest. Moving on, we have Sunfire Cape. One of those Orn items that you can see, and... It would honestly fit the mode. The fact that you've got Iceborne Gauntlet in the mode, which creates panels of ice that, uh, well, apply attack speed reduction to champions. Why not add a Sunfire Cape that nearby enemies take a little bit of damage? It would obviously meet, go well onto tank frontliners or bruisers that you want to be running. It would be fairly strong because you could build it out of a uh, ruby crystal and something else it would pro provide a bit more of a damage oriented tank so you could make like your brawn or maybe even a garen have a bit more of a effect being able to spin a rooney on targets and also apply a bit more damage while they're spinning We've already discussed what more Malmortius is. It'll be a better use for the uh, combination to make the current Bloodthirster. But it would be good if it provided you a magic damage shield when you're low health. As it's like lifeline, shall we say, as its ability. And then you've got Blade of Rune King, Lich Bane, and Sheen. Like... Vampire Acceptor obviously will build into the Rune King, and it be with the Rika bow as well. So there you go, you've got one creation out of them two, and it would obviously be basically just to give you attack speed and lifesteal at the same time. And that would be the main use of it. 
I was thinking of like actual ability passive, but I couldn't really think of something properly to stick onto it. I think having it as just a base attack speed life steal item, or you steal X amount of health for, depending on the enemy's attack speed or whatever. Something like that would work. Finally, we have the last two items, and they're kind of build ups to each other while the Sheen builds up to the Lich Bane. And honestly, the Lich Bane, in a sense, every time you cast an, uh, an ultimate, your next three or four attacks do increase damage. And that would be quite useful because you've got Spear of Sojin in the mode. Spear of Sojin, if you don't know, it every time you cast you you basically gain X amount of mana back quicker. And it would honestly be good to run something like them two together. It provides like combos for items more than what people are used to. Cause the main items you see in TFT right now are the fact uh Rage Blade Gunblade and maybe a BF, I mean Bloodthirster here and there. But there's obviously certain items that do super good in this mode. So why not make more items and more of a balanced set of like items in the top tier? Like, you have more in the top tier, giving people more options to what they build into would be huge and I haven't discussed Sheen but it's fairly obvious that it'll be an on hit like proccing it will apply a bit more stab damage to a champion and yeah it would be quite useful but that's going to be the end of this episode today it's a bit of a long one I've rambled on about everything here and yeah that's going to be it if you enjoyed it leave a like down below subscribe if you're new around here I'll see you guys later. Also, happy 10 years of League of Legends.